there are many abiding and deep questions that we have about the cosmos and about ourselves. Foremost among them are questions like, where did we come from and where did the universe come from? And what makes questions like that really hard to wrap your brain around is that the cosmos is enormously vast compared to our everyday life and our everyday experiences here on Earth. This is the Hubble Space Telescope. It is arguably the most successful scientific instrument ever built by humans. It has seen farther and discovered more than any telescope in history, and it has taught us tremendous amounts about the universe. When we built Hubble, the astronomers set some tasks in front of it, and one of those tasks was to take a set of pictures called deep fields. And so I want to tell you about one of those deep fields. If you and I go down to the shores of Lake Michigan tonight, in the southern sky we'll see the constellation Orion, recognizable by his three belt stars and his belt hanging from the star, uh, from the, uh, his sword hanging from the belt. And then underneath him there's a very long and sinuous constellation called Eridanus, the Great Sky River. And in one of the bows of Eridanus, you'll see that it's absolutely dark. If you look there with your naked eye, you won't see anything at all. So we asked Hubble to look at that spot for 10 years, over and over and over again, until it had stared for a total of 23 days. And the result is one of the most startling and revelatory images ever taken by humans. This is called the Hubble Extreme Deep Field. And every fleck of light that you see in this picture is another galaxy a remote shoal of stars and gas and dust and other planets, all of them so impossibly far away compared to anything you and I have ever experienced. Now what we'd really like to know is how many galaxies like this are there in the entire universe? And we can figure that out. We can imagine that the whole sky is covered in patches just like this one. If I multiply every one of those patches, by the number of galaxies that we see here, there are some 500 billion individual galaxies in all the cosmos. That is an enormous number, far beyond things you and I ordinarily comprehend. This is the universe on its grandest scale. And to wrap our brains around it, we need a word to describe it. And so I like to say that the universe is ginormous. There are other ginormous numbers in the cosmos. Suppose on our expedition to the beach, you ask the following very interesting question. How many grains of sand are there on all the beaches and in all the deserts of Earth? And we can figure that out exactly the same way we figured it out for the galaxies. I can pick up a handful of sand and count all of them as they fall from my fingers. And if I multiply up for all the beaches and all the deserts of Earth, there are some 10 billion billion grains of sand on our planet. That's count to 10 billion a billion times. I'll wait. <laughs> yeah, okay? It's an enormous number. If we go back to our beach this summer, we'll see the Milky Way arching overhead from horizon to horizon. It's a diaphanous band of light that's the composite light from all the stars in the galaxy shining down on us at the same time. All told in the Milky Way, there are some hundred billion individual stars. And if I assume every galaxy in the cosmos is not unlike the Milky Way, that's perfectly reasonable, then there are some 10,000 billion billion stars in all the universe. 10 sextillion stars is a mind-bogglingly huge number. It makes you feel small. And when faced with such vastness, from the sand streaming through our fingers to all the stars in the galaxies overhead, it's easy to ask, how can we possibly understand anything at all about the universe? And the answer is you can't, because you possess a singularly powerful gift, the ability to ask a question. You and I started this conversation with a question. We said, why are we here? And questions like that are really philosophical, and it's not clear that they have definitive answers, although they're fun to talk about. But there are plenty of other questions, like, 
how many grains of sand are there, or how many stars are there in the cosmos, that can be answered. This is the most amazing thing about the universe, that we can ask questions for which you can discover answers. The universe didn't have to be that way. And we have a name for that process. We call that process science. And it's a process that everyone in this room is perfectly well suited to doing, no matter what you remember about your science class in school. Carl Sagan once likened all of science to playing a game of 20 questions. And you and I can play that game right here. I have something under that question mark. What is it? Is it on Earth? Yup. Is it alive? Nope. Did humans make it? Yup. I've just asked three questions, but already we've eliminated the vastness of everything in the universe. You know it's not a star or a black hole or dark matter. You know it's not any living thing, plant or animal. You know it's not a rock, a patch of dirt, or a fallen log. With 20 carefully chosen questions, you would absolutely be able to deduce that under my question mark, I have three people asking questions about the universe. It's a powerful gift that we have, and one, so far as we know, only humans possess. Seagulls and starfish and slime molds, they might ask questions about the cosmos. We don't think so. An interesting question to ask might be, well, why don't they? But a more interesting question to ask is, why do we ask questions? Why do you and I and 40,000 generations of humans before us ask questions like, how many stars are there in the cosmos and how many grains of sand are there on planet Earth? There are as many answers to that question as there are people who have ever lived. And every person who asks a question, they get some form of enlightenment, some form of joy, some form of wonder, or more importantly, the power to improve their lives by asking a question and finding out the answer. Every person, no matter how small or what small corner of the world they live in, has the ability to ask big questions and find out the answers. So, let me spend my last few minutes telling you about one more idea about our smallness in the cosmos. It's not a new idea, but it's one that I like to come back to and remind ourselves all the time. Consider just 10 drops of water splashed on your windowsill in a summer rainstorm. In those 10 drops, there are as many molecules of water as there are stars in the entire universe. Now, some of you may remember that you are made of 50 or 60% water, which means every one of you has 100,000 times more molecules of water in your body than there are stars in all of the universe. And every one of those molecules has two atoms of hydrogen, which is what the stars are made of. And the other atom is oxygen, which the stars make by burning hydrogen. And at the end of their lives, the stars throw all of that in, out into the universe, and eventually it comes back together and it becomes me, and it becomes you. In a very real way, you are atoms who have been put together to look out into the universe and ask the question, what's the deal with all those other atoms? You're a way for the cosmos to look at itself and ask those questions that we've always asked. Why am I here? Where am I going? What am I doing? And what's my purpose in this ginormous universe all around us? In a very real way, you are the cosmos made manifest. You're not any different than any of those other galaxies. You're not any different than those stars or any of those grains of sand. We're all made of the same star stuff. It's okay to feel small. We are small. Be humble, because you don't know everything there is to know about the universe. But be noble, because you can figure it out. You have the power to ask a question and figure out the answers. Be noble, because you are made of the stars. <laughs>